Do we need men? No. Why? Because they suck. <laughs> Even yeah, when blah, girls blah. are fighting with each other, like, it is so ugly. It is the ugliest thing that there is men around and they're not doing anything. But what? what kind of world do we live in where a normal, regular girl cannot find just a regular guy out here to date? Every time I'm put together, every time I feel confident, tell me why no guy would approach me. Because if he does, y'all gonna call him weird, stalker, thirsty, or some other name. It's safer to just look and keep it moving. Or well, despite all these modern women claiming they don't need men to live a better life, or to have a life with a good standard of living, scientific research says otherwise. A group that started being tracked in 1979 has shown that married men earn on average 44% more than men who are not married. This difference is even larger than the difference between men who did or did not get a college degree. People who have researched this trend have ultimately come up with four possible explanations. The first is simple sample bias, in that men who earn more are more likely to attract a partner and be able to pay for a wedding which on average now can cost over $20,000, not including the engagement ring or traditional honeymoon. The second justification is comparable to the first, with the exception that it does not call for males to be wealthy at the outset. Instead, research seems to imply that men with more conservative attitudes are more likely to get married and work hard in their employment, earning more money than their more liberal colleagues who don't care about traditional family values like marriage and never calling in sick. The third hypothesis is that guys who marry just improve as employees. According to this explanation, Marriage encourages men to put in more hours at the office, pursue promotions, and take on more challenging tasks. Theoretically, males who marry will do this because of an innate desire to support their spouse and their family. Alternatively, they may be willing to put in longer hours simply to get away from their wives and children. This theory asserts that married men are more likely to be better employees, particularly in highly lucrative and demeaning professions like law, medicine or finance because they can rely on their spouse to handle household chores like cooking, cleaning, and maintaining the home, which would otherwise divert a single person's attention from their work. The final theory is that married men were somehow favored by employers to unmarried males. Companies, if companies can pay women less, why don't they hire all women? Well, that's a whole nother story. Really? I, under I understand your, your, your argument. Uh -huh. And I understand that you're angry. I'm not angry. I no, can no. hear it in your voice. Listen I'm not to angry. your voice. I'm hearing now my voice and I sound pretty calm. You have now shifted the quality of your voice. And I thank you for that. Okay. And you've just given me a condescending look. And that's another reason why we need feminism. And now I'm done. And thank you right. so much. Being alone is quickly turning into an unattainable luxury for many individuals as living expenses skyrocket. Single people are financially lagging behind their friends in committed partnerships without a companion to share the financial load with. The benefits of being able to combine income and share expenses are just the beginning. Traditional married couples even earn more on average than singles, according to numerous studies conducted by famous institutions in numerous nations. It's interesting to note that the causes of the wage disparity identified by the researchers were causative, so it wasn't just that wealthier people were more likely to get married. Having a spouse provides people with important advantages that enable them to earn more money during their careers, on average. To make matters worse, there is a widening disparity between married people and unmarried people. Additionally, the price of dating is rising alarmingly. This means that those who are financially secure enough to participate in the dating game will profit financially from long-term partnerships more than ever before. We must also keep in mind that many people prefer to remain single, and even more concerningly, many people in partnerships would wish to end them if they could afford to. It's against the law to inquire about someone's marital status during a job interview, and it's against the law to make a hiring decision based on such information.
men so, and women actually are more the same than they are different. But the issue is, is that small differences at the population level can turn into very large differences at the extreme. So, for example, men and women are broadly similar with regards to aggression, although men tilt a little bit more towards aggression. About so that if you picked a random person out of the population, male and female, and you guessed that the male was more aggressive, you'd be right 60% of the time. But if you take the one in a hundred most aggressive people, they're all male. And that's why the overwhelming proportion of people who are in prisons are male. Now, do you want to equalize that, just out of curiosity? I what about bricklayers? They're 99% male. And the f and we've got about three quarters of, of the population now in universities, mm -hmm. in the humanities and social sciences are female. Yeah. Are we going to equalize that? And men, men work more longer hours. They work more dangerous jobs. They're more likely to move. They're more likely to work outside. They're more likely to participate in jobs in the STEM fields that are scalable. They make more money for those reasons. And that's all hidden under the idea that the reason that men and women make different amounts of money is because of their gender. It's a very simplistic analysis. The Equal Opportunity Employment Commission might sanction them severely if they did. Nonetheless, a married man can still have advantages in his career. The perks begin when an employee's employer discovers whether they are married or not through paperwork or even just casual discussions. Marriage may be considered as a natural aim that people who traditionally live their lives reach making it feasible that married men are perceived as having more maturity. But, as fascinating as it is, dating costs 40% more than it did before. According to a survey, married women make 10% less money than unmarried women. The gap does not exist because married women are more inclined to give up their jobs and remain at home with their spouses. The study considered that and discovered the 10% decrease in income based on comparable women who worked equivalent hours. So. A combination of the same factors that contribute to married men's higher earnings can also be used to explain why married women make less money than unmarried women. Employers most likely favor single women, since they are thought to be less likely to leave their jobs and start families. It's improper. Although it shouldn't, we all know that it does. The point is that, although married women make less money than single people on average, conventional married couples make substantially more money overall. According to a Time magazine article, Dating now costs 40% more than it did 10 years ago, and financial stress is one of the main reasons for divorce. Regrettably, this implies that getting married is somewhat akin to purchasing a home. Although it's a terrific approach to safeguard your financial future, the average person can no longer afford it. Having said that, is it still so amazing to say that getting married is a better investment than going to college? Given how expensive education is, the money could be better invested elsewhere. Nowadays, you see a lot of women acting as though they don't need males, don't want to get married, and other such things. I recognize that. Okay, but what does your financial market have to say about that? What is the message of your retirement? Many people don't realize it, and in reality, women have less say in retirement decisions than do males. That is typically true, and it is also true in the minority community. In conclusion, there's a big gap between the reality and expectations of men, and especially women around the world, when it comes to being in serious and committed relationships. While more and more men might be going their own way, that just does not point to a healthy future from a social point of view where the idea of a family is falling apart. To top it off, the global recession as a result of the post-pandemic world and the war between Russia and Ukraine is also causing global prices of commodities to rise, thus creating global inflation that is only going to make it harder for single women to survive and thrive. So. It's true that single women now need men more than ever. They need most importantly to be partners in generating wealth and raising the family income because as we talked about in the research, married partners earn more money and have a wider pool of resources they can share and utilize to live and thrive. Without a partner, single women have it tough because in an increasingly expensive world where everything is going to get harder to purchase, single women can really live better if they're married and have another income to share the living costs with. Single women need to realize this and consider finding male partners based on how stable and how traditional the guy is. Women cannot afford to make the same mistakes they've been making in the past, that is, falling for and chasing the stereotypical bad boys for the adrenaline rush and spontaneous intimacy. Those guys aren't going to help women in the long run. The nice boring guys are the ones who earn well and have a stable lifestyle. They might be boring at first, but living with one is going to make women's lives a lot easier. And all these guys ask is appreciation, respect, and loyalty. And that's something modern women have failed to provide in the last four to five decades. Thanks for watching Man Reacts. 
Show us your love and support by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Support us and help us spread support for men around the world. Do comment and share your thoughts. We're always up for a healthy debate and discussion.